All right. I'm happy to compile a list for you. Okay. We look forward um, to seeing it. Do you do you want an outline of each or no. do you just want the raw links? No, we'll just take the raw links. Um, okay. So for those of you who were here and are aware of the conversation I had on Monday, Monday, um, we had an on-air conversation with an individual that goes by the name Dr. Professor SC. He maintained that he was a conservative um, with a, a good on you, Af Safik. Uh, he maintained that he was a conservative with eight years of education in, um, in psychology with a, with a study in early childhood development. Uh, it was part of his field of study, though not a specialization. Um, he came on air to discuss the my position, as uh, my position as such. We were discussing the "Don't Say Gay" bill in, um, in that has been passed in Florida, and I am of the position that early life comprehensive sexual education is a net positive for society and the individual. He was of the position and thesis that it is a net negative. Um, during this conversation, I, um, I put forth the uh, ver various p studies and facts and positions, and Dr. Professor SC maintained that his expertise uh, allowed him a wide variety and varied uh, allotment of sources. Uh, though he could not produce any at the time, he uh, promised us at the end of the, uh, the piece that he would gather his bookmarks together. We agreed that conservative websites weren't a... Uh, a, a viable source and that he was to be restricted to peer reviewed medical uh, journals, medical journals, university publications, the traditional uh, um, fields and areas of publishing of these sorts of academic texts that are standard within the, uh, within the, uh, the space, right? This was agree agreed upon. Um, he, said that he could provide and compile a list of resources that could prove his point that the conservative position that early life comprehensive sexual education is a net negative to the individual and society both. Now, I want to say before I go on any further, this is the message that I sent to um, uh, uh, Dr. Professor SC. It was not sent moments ago. It was sent early in, uh, it was sent early yesterday morning, inviting him back, saying, hey, bud, just wanted to inform you that the review process for granting access to the IDA project, don't worry, we'll get to it, I'll explain all of that, has gone through and they provided me with full access to all projects, we'll be, uh, and I've pulled the studies that you linked to. We'll be covering this in depth on Wednesday's show, and we'd love to have... Uh, I, miss, I misspelled, I, I said two back, have you back to explain your position further utilizing the calibration settings for the Siemens T3 scanners that you screenshotted for us ever so generously. Hope to see you, th uh, hope to see you there. Okay. I invited him back. Um, so it is Wednesday. I have heard neither hide nor hair from him. There, there, there is no return message. Um, so I just wanted to provide that, that in fact, while I will be speaking one-sided on this topic and he is not here to defend himself, the opportunity to be here, um, has been presented to him and he, uh, seemingly turned it down. Um, so. Later that evening, he posted to our discord server one piece of of evidence, shall we say. Remember, the thesis is, is early life comprehensive sexual education a net negative or a net positive for society and the individual, right? This is the thesis. Now, he 
maintained that he could provide a plethora of research. This is the only piece of evidence that he posted. Now, he posted this and maintained that this proved, and we have this, we have this discussion, it's archived on our server. He maintained that this proved that his point was valid and my point was moot. So, the evidence that he provided as such is this. This is a screenshot. Now, I have removed his email since he gave us his email address. This is a screenshot from the IDA project, the imaging data and uh, uh, the imaging data archive at USC. This is a sub, uh, that is a um, that is basically a repository of medical scans and imaging data varied across over eighty two. Uh, there are up to eighty two projects at this point. Um, the project that he pointed to was the Human Connectome project. Now, I don't have that up here, but let's just human connectome. Oh, God, my typing is off today. Human, human connectome project. And let's get you over here. The human connectome project is uh, a publication, uh, is a methodology, uh, is a project that is attempting to map the human brain. It is uh, a way to literally fly through brain pathways, compare circuits, all that sort of thing. It uses highly specific functional magnetic resonance imaging to provide this mapping and it, it it aids to provide a compilation of neural data in order to graphically navigate the human brain these are the links that he provided he maintained that these three links again provide uh, provided the evidence now this is an individual who maintains they are a conservative and they have eight years of professional level study and, uh, and activity within the uh, field of psychology with an understanding of early childhood psychological development. These are the three pieces of evidence that he has provided us to obtain. Now, he would not provide us with this data. He would merely provide us a screenshot from the IDA Project webpage in which he did this. Now, what I can tell you before I go any further, is medical interfaces, uh, as far as software and websites go, are incredibly complex and poorly designed. Um, I know this as a lifelong IT guy. So, what he did was, he did not have an, he had an inability to understand what he was looking at, and as such, he came into the Human Connectome Project, he clicked download, and he went to study data. Now, due to his complete lack of understanding of what he was looking at, he believed what he was providing us was some obscure fMRI data in its entirety, and that these files would be large and huge, and we would never be able to parse them. Also, all of this information is gated behind the University of Southern California's IDA project, and you have to apply for uh, access to this. You have to provide your academic credentials, you have to provide what project you are working on, and you have to get access to, and it is not an automatic approval system, you have to undergo review. Now, what I did was contact the IDA project and explain to them that in fact I have zero academic credentials related to this field of study and that in fact what I am is a streamer and this is what has occurred. An individual that has access to your project data who maintains they have eight years of study in psychology has argued with me on air that comprehensive early life sexual education is a net negative to society and the individual. Now, upon application to this, uh, to this project, you are informed that review processes take between five and seven business days for them to contact you back. Now, I have the timestamps on this. It was three hours and 54 minutes, I believe, before the project manager emailed me and said, you have full access to all project data 
And also, do you have any relevant information or credentials or name associated with that individual? So I provided the project manager of the, uh, the IDA project with Dr. Professor SC's email address, as was originally on this screenshot he provided us. So uh, what you should know is that academics are very petty when it comes to protecting their data. They work hard for this sort of stuff. Now, what is this? What has he provided us? What is this evidence that is so damning and so convincing that, again, early life comprehensive sexual education is a net negative to the society and the individual because this is the position he argued. So this is structural, uh, a structural and diffusion processing methods, EP2D, diffusion grad warped B vals and BVAX, and e uh, EP2D, diffusion grad warped and eddy current corrected B vals and BVAX. Now, we will get there. Don't worry about it. So, let's start with the PDF. This is the PDF. This is the HCP Structural and Diffusion Data Methods PDF provided to us by Dr. Professor SC, who again is a self-described conservative with supposedly eight years in psychological study and a master's degree in psychology, who maintains that early life sexual childhood development of a comprehensive, uh, early life sexual education of a comprehensive nature is damaging to the individual. And this is his evidence. The introduction to the document states fairly unequivocally what the Human Connectome Project is. The Human Connectome Project has released structural and diffusion scans from 35 healthy adult subjects. Imaging protocols and processing methods are described below. Um, okay. Hold on. Let me, uh, I did want to get one extra thing. Give me, bear with me, bear with me. Um, I want you guys to see one extra thing. Uh, while we do this, there we go. Uh, I just need to log into my account on HCP and I want to grab something really quickly so y'all can see what we're all about. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I should have prepared this element sooner. I, I completely forgot that I should have this element of the discussion prepared. That is, that is most assuredly my bad, um, but I think it's important for you guys to see. All right, um, and then we'll do that. All right, cool. Um, I can close that now. Now, <clears throat> so this is the PDF. Imaging protocols, each data set in the file format, consists of an MPRA AGE scan, a high-resolution T2 space scan, and diffusion scans with four different B values. Here are the, uh, the structural scan variables. This is how they are working at, right? This is their field of view millimeter size. It's 256 by 256 millimeters at the T1W. The T2Ws are 224 by 224 millimeters, right? These are scan specifications. All right, here is the structural scan specifications. Here is the diffusion scan specifications. How many slices the Human Connectome Project uses? 96 slices at 1.5 millimeters thick and a 1.5 uh, millimeter isotropic voxel size. That is isotropic uh, is actually a sort of a dimensional perspective, right? All of these are settings, okay? This is the diffusion data was acquired in oblique axial slices. So this is further description of how the methodology of the slicing of the MRI slicing of the 35 subjects' brains was achieved, all right? This is the data pre-processing, what software tools they used, the descriptions of the structural scans, and gradient non-linearity uh, linearity correction. So these are the processing methodologies that they used to run, run these images through for the structural scans. These are the processing methodologies they used for the diffusion scans. Here are the various references for the uh, various grad students and doctors who worked on this project. This is piece of evidence number one here at the bottom, structural and diffusion processing methods. Again, this is his evidence that 
early life comprehensive sexual education is a net negative for society and the individual. And this individual maintains he is a conservative with a master's degree in psychology and a study in early life childhood development. His, his username on Twitch is DR Professor SC. Right? That's not doxing. He came on the air. He volunteered his information. Let's go to the next one. EP2D diffusion grad warped B vals and BVEX. Well, okay. So those are zip files. These two next two are zip files. They contain this. This is a file manifest. This is all this is. The directory includes three files for each search subject, BVALS, BVEX, and BVEX, uh, BVEX FSL. Here's the file manifest, and here's a general description. The MGH USC HCP team has acquired and shared diffusion imaging data from 35 healthy adults scanned on the customized Siemens 3T Connectome scanner. The BVEX and BVALS data in this directory correspond to the EP2D diffusion grade warp data. Now, I'm saying things that don't mean anything to you. What is a BVEC and a BVAL? Well, let's go over to an introduction to diffusion weighted imagery of MRI data because this is what you need to do. So, they are gradient amplitudes, BVALs, and directions, B vectors. Okay, these are values and vectors for amplitude and directionality. Right, this of the diffusion measurement and are named with extensions BVALS and BVEX. These are calibration settings, specifically in this instance for a Siemens 3T Connectome scanner, right? MRI scanner. So the BVALS and BVEX that this is referencing over here is essentially nothing more than a calibration setting that a, f a fellow researcher could use to set your MRI scanner to the exact same measurements and methodologies of scanning that the, t the HCP team at USC has used. So you can then further submit more data into this project if you wish to participate. That's what these numbers are. So what do these files look like? Because he has stated that this is, again, hard evidence, conclusive evidence that early life sec comprehensive sexual education is a net negative for society and the individual. Okay, so piece number two, what is this data? This is this data. That's what these files look like. And here is the eddy values. These are calibration settings for a 3T connectome scanner. That's what this data is. These are calibration settings. Now, you may be wondering, but Kai, there has to be more to this, right? There has to be more to this project. This is weird that all this is, is that. You're right. You are right. Um, let me, there we go. So let me show you what this project is actually about. Because remember when I said earlier that I could tell he didn't understand how to navigate this website? because what he did was go to download study data. And he thought that meant the entirety of the Human Connectome Project study data. But that isn't how IDA works. IDA, the Imaging Data Archive at USC, actually works this way. This is the study data. And don't worry, this data has been anonymized. This is a slice. As you can see down here, these are the planes of the slice that have to do with those BVEX and BVALs, right? It is an axial slice. And here's what that slice looks like, all right? This is the actual project data. Now, even if I were to be very generous, 
and state that this individual merely just was pointing us in the right direction. This is not conclusive evidence that early life comprehensive sexual education is a net negative for society and the individual. This is anything but. This would require a radiological review and, and then an interpretive opinion stating that maybe there is a, a retardation of development in the prefrontal cortex of this individual who received early life, sex, uh, early life sexual education. But none of that data is contained within the IDA project or the HCP project archives. They do not, co uh, co uh, they do not uh, collate their data, nor do they even collect that data. In no way, shape, or form is any of that variable set that would be required to justify or render such an opinion part of the data set of this project group. Okay. Now, with that said, let me further do my due diligence because I can produce results. Now, here is a study published in the Global Health, uh, Public Health and International Journal for Research and Policy and Practice, that if you want these links, I can provide these links to you uh, in Discord or in chat. This study, which was, uh, which was authored by a series of experts in a variety of positions, right? Essentially what this uh, document is, is about how investing in, quote, very young adolescent sexual and reproductive health is a net positive for society. Here is, here is your abstract, quote, in lower and middle income countries, where most unwanted pregnancies, unsafe abortions, maternal deaths, and sexually transmitted infections occur, investment in positive youth development to promote sexual and reproductive health, SRH, is increasing. Most interventions, though, focus on older adolescents overlooking very young adolescents. Th since early adolescence marks a critical transition between childhood and older adolescence and adulthood, setting the stage for future SRH and gendered attitude and behaviors, targeted investment in very young people is in imperative to laying foundations for f healthy future relationships and positive SRH. This article advocates for such investments and identifies roles and policymakers, donors, program designers, and researchers and evaluators who can play to address the disparity. This is just the starting position, by the way. Uh, let me get my orientation here. Okay, cool. Now, because during that uh, conversation, I went on to point out that we have a 30-year comprehensive meta-analysis and multifaceted series of studies that have occurred between uh, juxtaposing the Netherlands versus the U.S. Now, on average, Dutch and American teenagers have sex for the first time around the same age, between 17 and 18. You could go to the Gut uh, Guttmacher Institute for this document. And you can verify this data for yourself. But they have dramatically different results. See, teen pregnancy has been on the decline in the U.S. for the past three decades. But despite that, American teenagers still give birth at five times the rate of their Dutch peers. Here is the CDC data providing that. Again, I will provide all my links if you want them. Five times the rate of their Dutch peers who also have fewer abortions you can go to the Guttmacher Institute about abortion worldwide. I have the full publication on that one as well. In the United States, people under 25 make up half of all new STI cases each year. You can go to the CDC for that information. While young people in the Netherlands account for 10% of new cases in their country, you can go to the Dutch publications for that one. You can translate that at your own volition. The document will be available. Socially, Sex is different too. Sexually active people sleep around less in uh, in the Netherlands. Here is a, uh, here is a research uh, here is a research gate published uh, document by a PhD and a woman at uh, University of Maine who have studied these uh, these these issues. The uh, sexually active people in hall, uh, in in the Netherlands sleep around less. They communicate more often, and. They are more open about their partners with likes and dislikes and report higher rates of sexual satisfaction. You can go for this document there. The Netherlands ranks as one of the most gender equal countries in the world as a result of this 
early life sexual education, which by the way, starts when they are in third grade. They are number three in the world on the United Nations Development Ge uh, Program Gender Inequality Index, while the U.S. doesn't crack the top 40. Here is that, uh, that data and document, if you so choose. Since 2012, when the Dutch education minister mandated that all students beginning in primary school receive some form of sexual, edu uh, sexual education, this is the mandate, Right, um, that includes both le uh, that includes lessons on health, tolerance, and assertiveness. The core objectives are to prevent sexual coercion, cross the boundaries, and homophobic and transphobic behavior, as well to promote general inclusion within their society. New research has confirmed that comprehensive sexual education in school, lessons on sexual diversity and inclusiveness, in addition to the biological lessons, are uh, like uh, uh, those that receive that education are less likely to engage in name calling, more willing to intervene when LGBTQ or female, pe female peers are bullied in school. So this is literally, uh, they will step up and do, do the right thing. So in Dutch schools that use the current most uh, the country's most popular sex ed curriculum, it's got a weird name, but it's actually translated to butterflies in your stomach. Yearly lessons be begin with four, five, and six-year-old students talking about the differences between their bodies, learning about reproduction, and discovering your own sexual likes, dislikes, and boundaries. Third graders learn about love, including how to be kind to your crush instead of pulling their ponytail in the schoolyard. Before middle school, children get lessons on sexual diversity, gender identity, deciding when to have sex, how to use barriers and contraceptives. All along, all along this process, students are schooled in healthy relationships and how to reject gender role stereotypes. Since gender, gender stereotypical thinking is a risk factor in poor sexual health outcomes. Here's this study on that one. As of... 2016, the CDC has set, stated unequivocally, comprehensive sexual education programs have been shown to reduce high-risk sexual behavior, a clear factor for sexual violence, victimization, and perpetration. Here's the document on that one. Published by, oh, let's see, three, five, five PhDs and two masters. All right? Now, in addition to all of this... There is plenty of evidence showing that abstinence uh, education programs are highly ineffective at preventing sexual activity and leave young people uninformed and unprepared when they do actually have sex. Here is a study from the Journal of Adolescent Health on that topic. All right. Um, and... When you study these outcomes, what you find is that you end up with higher rates of a pregnancy, higher rates of birth, higher rates of abortion if you do participate in these abstinence-only programs. Now, if anybody <clears throat> would like to step up and have this discussion with me from the other side of the aisle... Now is your opportunity. If you are a social conservative, if you think that it is grooming children, if you think that it leads to kids fucking and adults taking advantage of them, then now is when I open the floor to you. Having seen what I am capable of doing, what I am willing to, to do, the extents to which I will go to check your sources and provide my own. Now is when I would invite you to speak up.